with regards to taqlid. Now everybody knows you need to do taqlid. It's the same old story. When they start talking about ahkam, the first thing you're going to hear is going to be taqlid. Right? But I don't want to get into who are you following and how you need to pick that person. How do you figure out, how in the world do you figure out who's more knowledgeable than the other? Is there one person or whatever? Do you listen to the group in Qum that's referred to as the Khubrigan or the experts or Jama'i Mudarrasin or whatever? That's besides the point, the, the point that I want to make tonight about Taqli. I want to mention something some of you might have heard, but it's important. It's important that we learn this because it can make living as a Muslim, as a believer, as a practicing believer, easier for us. It's, I like to call it a, a loophole. That's a loophole. But it's one that we don't make. It's one that we've been given. In other words, this is something that we're allowed to do. And a lot of people haven't heard this. It makes life easier on them. What is it with regards to taqlid? What it is, is a concept of being able to follow more than one marja on different topics. Sometimes you hit an issue that your marja has a very difficult fatwa on. Okay? Sometimes you hit that. I'll, I'll give you an example. Everybody in this room, especially those who've been fasting, love to have ice cream. All right. One of the ingredients that many of, or much of what's out there has in it, is vanilla extract. Now, if you look up vanilla extract, it has ethanol in it. All right. What is ethanol? Ethanol is a type of alcohol. Now, according to Ayatollah Khamenei, that's najis. And therefore, ice cream that has it in it is going to be haram to have. Now, I love ice cream, vanilla ice cream, all the good ones. And Marja says it's haram to have. What am I supposed to do? Well, you have a loophole. What's, well, yeah, you're not going to die without it, but... That's not how life is here. It's not about life and death, always. If the loophole is there, then it's there. Of course, there's a problem with this particular example I mentioned, because it was a change in fatwa. I'll, I'll mention that to ease it for everybody afterwards anyway. But uh, on this issue and, and other issues as well, for example, another example I'll throw out, uh, the reverse. People don't like to pay khums, right? You don't like to pay khums. Do you? You like to try to lessen the amount that you're going to be paying. Well, Ayatollah Sistani says even gifts or money that's given to you by insurance is something that home supplies to. Ayatollah Khamenei says actually no. Only money you work for. Or bonuses that your company gives. That's not earnings. According to Ayatollah Khamenei, Khums doesn't apply to that. According to Ayatollah Sistani, it does. All right. So, well, I'm following Ayatollah Sistani. Can I do anything about that? The answer is yes, there is a loophole in taqlid. What is it? The loophole is this. If, this is a big if, if, based on the research that we do, two or more marjas, two or more mujtahids, are proven to be more knowledgeable than the rest of the mujtahids, but these two themselves are either proven to be equal or we're not sure if one of them is more knowledgeable than the other. We're sure both of them are more knowledgeable than everybody else, but we're not sure if either of the two is more knowledgeable than the other. Or we know they are equal. In that case, we will have the option of following the fatwa of whichever of these two marjas we wish. So for example, if based on the research you do, you come to the conclusion that I know 
Ayatollah Khamenei and Ayatollah Sistani are more knowledgeable than everybody else because those are the two names I hear all over the place. All the scholars, it's either this one or the other. So they must be more knowledgeable than everybody else. But I don't know if any of them, either of the two, is more knowledgeable than the other. For example, if that's the conclusion you reach, then on these two issues that we mentioned, you can choose the easier one. You can choose to follow Ayatollah Khamenei on the matter of Khums and not pay Khums on gifts. Or follow Ayatollah Sistani and have the ice cream. Now, because I mentioned that example, let me also mention Ayatollah Khamenei's fatwa apparently on the issue of alcohol has changed just a bit. He no longer has a fatwa on alcohol or ethanol being najis. What he has is an ihtiyat wajib, an obligatory precaution. A good thing about obligatory precaution is you don't need to have someone that's equivalent in knowledge to have the leeway of following somebody else. Even if you consider Ayat al-Khamenei the most knowledgeable and you consider based on your research, not just haphazardly, not just based on whims, based on your research, you consider Ayat al-Khamenei most knowledgeable, next most knowledgeable to be Ayat al-Sistani, you can actually go to Ayat al-Sistani and follow his fatwa on that matter. You don't have to worry about all the different things that are surrounding you that have ethanol in them. Because there's too many of them, I don't have time for that. Now, we said a salawat. There was a practical ruling we mentioned, and sometimes there's confusions with regards to that. And at times, the reason for it is because people have not heard it before. The ruling we had mentioned on the first night that we started mentioning the practical laws was about a concept known as tab'id. Tab'id is where you are able to choose between two marjas, not in all the rulings, but in other words, we have this concept, everybody has heard this, if you have different maraja, you can choose from amongst them if they're all equal in knowledge. We all know that. Everybody's heard that. You get to choose a maraja. But other than choosing a maraja, we're saying you can choose between them in specific rulings. Follow one on a particular issue in prayer and the other in another issue, in prayer. Follow one in one issue of tahara, the other in another issue of tahara. This is something you can do. Believe me, I'm not making it up. It's in the Rasad. Ayatullah Khamenei, Imam Khomeini, Ayatullah Sistani, other Maraja, they have this. You're able to pick and choose. But when can you do this? This is where the confusion, I believe, is. And before I mention that confusion, let me clear up something else. There's another concept that's similar to this, referring to another marja, that people have confused with this idea. What is that? Whenever a marja has ihtiyat wajib, all right, you get to go and do what? Either follow the ihtiyat wajib or go to the next most knowledgeable marja. That is if you don't have equal maraja. If you have equal maraja, you don't go to the next most knowledgeable, you go to the equal. Correct? Tab'id is different. Tab'id is where there is fatwa. Tab'id is where there is fatwa. Both of them have a fatwa, but you get to pick and choose. When do we do this, or when do we have the allowance of doing that? As I was saying, this is where confusion might have been in some of the explanations that were given. One case which is clear for most of the maraja that I have at least checked, all of the ones that I've checked, is that when you are sure the two are equal, when you do research about Maraja, who to follow, you come up with different names 
Some people say Marja A, the others say Marja B, Marja C, whatever. You get a few different names, and people usually get confused. So who am I supposed to choose in the end? The result that they may come up with, and I think naturally they would come up with, is that, well, it seems these two or three or four marjas seem to be pretty close and equal in their knowledge. They are top, but amongst themselves they're not very different. If you come to the conclusion that they are equal, that's clear. The statements are a bit more clear on that one. There's another case that the confusion is on it, I think. And that is, and we mentioned this the first time, I think this may, may have caused a bit of confusion. When you're not sure if one of the two is more knowledgeable than the other. Okay? There are two cases that are similar. And I want to make it make a clear distinction between the two so we're not confused. There's a time where you know one of them is more knowledgeable, you don't know which one it is. Okay? You don't know which of the two is more knowledgeable. That means what? It means I already know one of them is more knowledgeable. I don't know which one it is. In that case, can you do tab'id? No. No, you can't. Make sure you don't reach that conclusion. Make sure you don't. Because if you do, then you're going to have to do ahtiyat. That's a difficult situation. And I, don't, I really don't think anybody should reach that conclusion. If you reach that conclusion, come and talk to me after the talk. I'll clear it up for you. Okay. Don't stay in that state. It's very difficult to live a life, but there's no need for it. There's another case where I'm not even sure if one of them is more knowledgeable than the other. I know these two or three are more knowledgeable than the rest, but amongst themselves, is one knowledgeable, is one more knowledgeable than the other? I have no evidence of that. This case is also a case that Tabaid can be done. This is also a case that it can be done. Alright, recite a salawat please. Mm.